so I've had requests from students, just uh, some techniques on creating a start menu for a game. A lot of times we'll refer to that as a splash page. And I even have a separate video tutorial on it, but I want to do this one again because I didn't like the way I did it. I was using Game Maker as an image editor, and it's really not the best tool for making uh, and editing a splash page for a game. I recommend you either use something like Photoshop, or if you've got like some built-in paint program, you can use that. Personally, I like Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R.com. I like to use the Pixlr editor. The reason why I like it is one, it's free, and I love free. Two, I like it because it allows you to create images, open images, etc., and you can do it on. Um, you can just do it right on here, and um, it works with layers. And it's sort of like Photoshop. It, it doesn't support all of the features Photoshop has, but because it works with layers, it allows us to have a background layer and text and things like that. So one of the things I recommend you do on a game splash page, if you have no, if you have no other thing that you're not sure what to do, don't leave a white background. It's the most boring background you can do on a game. Um, do at least pick some kind of a cool color. All right. And you can look at web colors here if you want to do it that way. Uh, notice I just clicked on this little color here. Um, and we, you can actually grab an, a color off of an image. You can adjust red, green, and blue. And so as you adjust these colors, where those colors meet, we generate new colors. So you can come up with all kinds of colors. There's some great tools you can use. Okay. Um, and so once you find a good color that you would like to use, just go with it. Um, anything you do is probably going to be more interesting um, that way. So I select my color here. I can get the paint bucket here. And I can just fill it with the background color. Um, that depends on what your game is about. I can't tell you what images to use. But I can encourage you, if yours was going to be a game that's like a maze game in a dungeon, find some kind of a picture of a dungeon or something that kind of uh, supports that theme. So one of the things you can do is you can copy an image somewhere else and paste it in. If you can find an image, you can even import an image directly off of a link from another site. So if I did a quick search for dungeons, I might find a good picture I could use. Of course, you want to abide by any copyright laws if you're planning on sharing this and maybe even trying to make money off of it. But if you're just doing it for your own personal use, uh, take a look and see what stuff you can find online. Okay, so I did a quick image search. I put in dungeons on Google, and we have some really interesting pictures I can see. Now, they're clearly coming from some other site. We got medieval, we've got, you know, Minecraft, castle, etc. We even have real life dungeons. Uh, we can click on here, uh, we can get a picture like this. And of course, if you knew you had uh, the ability to use this, this could be a great one to use. So one of the things I can do is I can get this image online and I might be able to use it. One of the things we should do is we should find out how big this picture is. It's definitely much easier to find a picture that is large. Uh, in this case, it, this is only 482 by 387. That's a little bit small for our purposes. So we may want to go back and refine our search. One of the things I recommend you do on an image search is you choose search tools and you click on size and I'd go for large. Okay, and that's going to give you more options. Again, I want to reinforce the idea here of make sure that you um, are able to use an image um, or that you're using it for a purpose you're not trying to make money off of. You're just trying to do something to practice your skills, hone them. Um, in which case, then, you know, like I said, just grab something that you like and run with it. So let's say I want to use this particular image. I click View Image. I've got my link right here. I'm going to copy that link. I'm going to go back here. And on image, uh, I believe I want to see if I, I probably have to just do a new image. Or actually right here, open image URL. Paste that link there, click OK, and then I will get that 
particular image. And I can use this image for my game. Now, of course, you may want to adjust it by doing some filters and playing around with some of this stuff to see what you can do, like pixelate. And, and mess around with it a little bit to change it up. Um, some people actually take something and change it so much you can't even recognize what it originally looked like. But you want to save your change. Um, at some point, you're going to want to come up with a name. And so I'm going to get my type tool. And on my type tool, I need to set my type. Uh, so look what it says right at the top. It says click to select or add a text. So I'm going to click here. And there, I can put my text in here. I've used this title before, Deadly Dungeons. Adjust your font to a nice appropriate font for what we're doing. If they are Deadly Dungeons, I recommend you find something that doesn't look too pretty. Definitely not Comic Sans. It would just be inappropriate for what we're trying to do here, right? Sure it would, okay. Well anyway, find a good one that you think goes with what we're trying to do here. Once you find it, um, make it nice and big. You want to make sure it stands out. Um, and you might want to bold and italicize it. You might want to pick a good color to go with it. And then you, you might want to have instructions that you might want to work it right onto your image here. So my recommendation is a good game. We'd have the name of the game. We would have credits. So go ahead and put your credits on here. Of course, your credits should be smaller in size. So I put my little credits on here, and then I might want to change the color to match what we're doing there. Click OK. Um, I might want to move my text. So I click OK. I get my arrow, and then I can move it. Okay. The other thing is um, at some point you want to have instructions and you could put them right onto this page here if you want or you could create a button that will take you to a page that has instructions. So first thing you want to do is save it. So I'm going to save this as it is but I'm going to resize it. So I'm going to choose image, image size. Okay, on image size make sure you constrain proportions and I might change this a little smaller to reduce the file size. I might make this 800 pixels wide. Click OK. There it is. Up. Oh, I'm going to have to move my text again. Now, my text didn't change in size, so I'm probably going to want to try to adjust that. And go back. Click on here. I'm trying to click where I had my text. I'm having a hard time. But I can read it. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay. And then I'm going to save it. And make sure when you save your image, you know where to find it. I recommend a JPEG would be good for a photo type quality. And I'm going to call it Deadly Dungeon Splash Page. So once you save it, give it a name, save it, make sure you know where you save it so that you can find it again. I have mine in Libraries Pictures. Once I save it, I can now load it up in Game Maker. I'm going to load it through Backgrounds. So I'm going to right click on Backgrounds, create a background, call it BG Splash Page. Now I want to load it, and then I find it where I saved it. So I look for Libraries, Pictures, and it was Deadly Dungeons right there. Click on Open, maximize it. There is my window. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to create my first room. And I'm going to set the background from here. So I click on Backgrounds. I go to here, BG Splash Page, maximize it. It's off to the side. So I want to position it a little differently. I'm going to try stretching, and it kind of stretched it. So I might have to adjust the image, or I might want to adjust the size. Now the first thing I noticed is my width here was 640, but my actual picture was 800. And so there we have it. So it, it had to do with the width and the height here. 
And of course, I can scale that to whatever I want. And then when I'm done, I can just check it. And if I were to go to run it, it would start me at that page. So I just test it out to see it. So here's an example of the first room. We begin. There's nothing we can do. We can't go anywhere, so we'll have to add a button to go to the next room. I'll show you that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and create a sprite in here. And fortunately, when you download this version of Game Maker, it comes with a series of sprites. And in this case, we have buttons, cards, uh, buttons. That's what I want. I want buttons. So we have the back button, the empty button, the help button. So that could be one info. So you could actually add these buttons to your main. And of course, we're going to use the play button. We're going to begin with that. And we're going to call this SPR. I like I always start with the same. Uh, we'll put on here play BTN. Okay, for play button. That's my sprite. I click OK. Now in Game Maker, of course, we need an object to go with the sprite and how we program it. So we're going to have this obj underscore object play btn because it's a play button. Use the sprite. Click OK. I'm going to now we have to have an event. So I'm going to put it in the room and basically it's going to be a click event. So we can do the key release is a very common one. So I click left button. Oh wait, not left release. I want to change that event to a mouse click, excuse me, left mouse button. And when I click it, I will go to the next room. Now, one of the things, I believe it's under main one. <laughs> there we go. Main one, and whenever you go into a room, you should always go ahead and only go into the, ne in the next room if it exists. So I grab that little uh, octagon, and it means if the next room exists, then we're gonna go to the next room. And we can apply a transition. And you can play around with these. I'm just going to say create from left. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK on here. And then, of course, I'm going to need another room. And we're not going to put anything in it. And that will be my indication that I've made it into that room by basically placing a button in room zero. And so notice, uh, whenever you add objects, you want to make sure you've selected the object you're going to add, the play button. And then you just click it where you want it. And I'm just going to put it there for now, but I can always move it. And if I don't want a button, I can just right click on it. So I'm going to right click and then maybe go here. Okay, let's go ahead and test this one out. And I think at this point, we're pretty close to moving forward. If I click on the play button, there we go. We go to the next room. Now, there, did you see there was a little glitch there? That glitch had to do with the fact that most rooms, the background size on setting is actually 640 by 480. So probably it would be in my best interest on the room zero to have the background be the same size. Or one of the things I can do on the settings, uh, I can go to view and I can say on the screen, I can port to a 640 by 480 screen. Uh, screen and uh, enable the use of views and let's just see if that makes it any cleaner of a transition. So it should be displaying at 640 by 480. Yeah, it's much cleaner. Okay. Now it's up to you how you want to do it. But anyways, that should get you started on your splash page. Thank you very much.